Good day, everyone, and welcome to today's program, Quinn QIO 508 Compliance Training. At this time, all participants are in a listen-only mode. During the call, there will be demonstrations with videos. Please turn on your computer speakers while the video plays. Later, you will have the opportunity to ask questions during the question and answer session. You may register to ask a question at any time by pressing the star and one on your touchstone phone. You may withdraw yourself from the queue by pressing the pound key. Please note this call may be recorded. I'll be standing by if you should need any assistance. It is now my pleasure to turn the conference over to Swati Daniels. Please go ahead. Thank you, Nikki. Hello and good afternoon. Welcome and thank you for attending the 508 Compliance Training for Video and Audio Compliance. This training will teach and demonstrate how to make your digital media compliant by creating meaningful audio descriptions and captions. This training is for 508 analysts that are responsible for creating compliant videos for internal and external distribution, trainings, and presentations. I am Swati Daniels, the Technology Manager and 508 Analyst at the Bazell Group. I have over seven years' experience remediating documents for private and government clients. I am excited to share the knowledge I have picked up over the years, and hopefully this training will assist all of you with incorporating the skills you learned today into your 508 processes within your organization, as well as having 508-compliant-ready videos. Please save any questions you may have till the end of this training, and I will answer them for you. Next slide, please. Today, we will cover several important topics to help you successfully create 508-compliant videos. After presenting related topics, I will follow with demonstrations. Before we begin, can we have our first poll question, please? This will give us an idea of which organizations our participants belong to. Please take a minute to answer. Thank you for your response. Next slide, please. Making accessible videos is critical for all organizations. Every person should be able to watch and understand the videos you make. A significant portion of Americans in the U.S., approximately 19 percent, have a disability. Not having accessible digital content can exclude your viewers from learning by inaccessible videos. Providing accessible media isn't a choice for companies that work with the federal government. It's the law. According to Section 508, all federal agencies are required to make their electronic and information technology accessible to people with varying disabilities. Deviating from the law can cause extensive consequences. Assistive technologies are improving day by day. It makes it possible for people with disabilities to have access to the same content as others on the Internet. But assistive technologies such as screen readers, text readers, and voice-activated devices can only pick up on pictures and videos if marked properly. Accessibility makes videos easier to watch for everyone. Compliant features such as captioning and audio descriptions make videos easier to understand for everyone, not only the people with the disabilities. In short, an accessible video makes the best videos. Next slide, please. So here's a question for you. So tell me, what's something you need to have to enjoy your favorite movie? Is it a bowl of popcorn, maybe your favorite candy, or the best surround sound system? For some, the answer is entirely different. It's an audio description. Videos are a powerful medium and benefits a lot of people, but can also create some barriers, especially for those who cannot see the video and require an equivalent to the audio. Some videos may not have a person speaking. 
Hence, the captions will not show on the video player. In other words, there will be no speech to display as text on the screen. Just imagine muting the sound on your TV or portable device and closing your eyes. That is exactly what a blind user will experience. In one word, nothing. Since they won't be able to see or hear what is going on in the video, this video is now completely useless to them. They are unable to absorb the information unlike us sighted viewers. To provide these audiences with more context, you will need to create an audio description to explain your video information. Your description should convey everything that happens in your video, the narration, the actions, all the characters, the sound effects, and everything else that's consisted, even the text. Adding an audio description can be done by uploading a separate audio file to your 508 compliant video player that allows your viewer to choose between the default audio track and the audio description track. If your player doesn't support this, you can make a separate video or audio track and make it available by creating a voiceover and adding it to the video. In this case, both captions and audio is available as a method to understand your video. Next slide, please. So writing audio description. Write simply and clearly. Use accurate and descriptive language. Avoid complicated and technical terms. Use complete sentences. Refrain from offensive or curse words. Try to match the audio with the style and tone of the content. Avoid any personal interpretation and opinions. And be aware of what is real and what is an illusion to the listener. All important visual elements of videos must be communicated to blind or low vision users in order to be fully compliant and in adherence to the accessibility law. Audio description communicates all necessary visual information such as who is on screen, where they are, what are they doing, their facial expressions, and any writing that is on the screen. Having an audio description provides additional information on the visual media that is considered essential for being able to understand the content. When this isn't provided, blind and visually impaired individuals are unable to understand and enjoy the media to its fullest potential. So now we will look at a few example videos with audio description so you can experience what it looks and sounds like. Please turn on your speakers or unmute your laptops and machines so that you can hear the videos. May I please have the first video? Muhammad kneels and taps his hands through the thick round cover of brown curled leaves. A scrawny nestling struggles on the ground near Muhammad's hand. His palm hovers above the baby bird. He lays his hand lightly over the tiny creature. Smiling, Muhammad curls his fingers around the chick and scoops it into his hands. He stands and strokes its nearly featherless head with a fingertip. Muhammad starts so as the, the bird video, nips please. his finger. So here is an example of a video where there are captions as well as the audio track. Now the captions are being picked up from the audio track, which are open, um, there's closed captions and open captions, which we will look at soon. So if there were no captions and nobody speaking what's going on in the video, a blind person would not know what's going on. All they hear is chirping sounds and leaves rustling. All of those little details have to be written out in your transcript or audio description. And that's the way that the user will experience the whole video. And Netflix is actually one of the few companies that are actually doing this. So, you know, when somebody order, they actually have this new accessibility feature in Netflix. And a lot of movie theaters are doing this as well now. They're making their movies accessible. Um, can we continue with the video, please? Sure. He taps his finger on the chick's gaping beak. He tilts his head back, then drops it forward. Muhammad tips the chick into his front shirt pocket. 
Wrapping his legs and arms around a tree trunk, Muhammad climbs. He latches onto a tangle of thin upper branches. His legs flail for a foothold. Muhammad stretches an arm between a fork in the trunk of the tree and wedges in his head and shoulder. His shoes slip on the rough bark. He wraps his legs around the lower trunk, then uses his arms to pull himself higher. He rises into thicker foliage and holds onto tangles of smaller branches. Gaining his footing, Muhammad stands upright and cocks his head to one side. An adult bird flies from a nearby branch. Muhammad extends his open hand. He touches a branch and runs his fingers over wide green leaves. He pats his hand down the length of the branch. His fingers trace the smooth bark of the upper branches, search the network of connecting tree limbs, and discover their joints. Above his head, Muhammad's fingers find a dense mass of woven twigs, a bird's nest. Smiling, he removes the chick from his shirt pocket and drops it gently into the nest beside another fledgling. He rubs the top of the chick's head with his index finger. Muhammad wiggles his finger like a worm and taps a chick's open beak. Smiling, he slowly lowers his hand. Thank you. We'll pause here for a second and discuss the video. So this video did a very good job of adding all the audio description from the heavy breathing, from the rough bark, you know, describing the texture of the bark, the small and large um, branches. Every single action, emotion, sound was described, and that is very important when you're creating audio description. That is the only way a blind user can take in the whole effect of the video. So anytime that you're creating audio description, you know, I would suggest close your eyes, you know, just listen to everything and imagine that you are that blind user. So just imagine, you know, you don't know anything that's going on, but do you hear the birds in the background? Do you hear the leaves rustling? Do you hear wind blowing? Did he fall off the branch, you know? So those are very tiny details that make a big difference. Um, when, you, when you're creating this audio description, remember you are the eyes and the ears for somebody who has this kind of an, um, disability. May we please have our second video? The second video is a small trailer for Frozen. From the creators of Tangled and Wreck-It Ralph, Disney. A carrot-nosed coalite snowman shuffles up to a purple flower peeping out of deep snow. Ooh, hello. <laughs> he takes a deep sniff. <sighs> His nose lands on a frozen pond. A reindeer looks up and pants like a dog. <gasps> Seeing the reindeer slip on the ice, the snowman smiles and moves towards him. Though actually, he's running on the spot. The reindeer falls on his chin. The snowman uses his arm as a crutch. The reindeer paddles his front legs. Head over heels, the snowman crawls along the ice. The reindeer does the breaststroke. The snowman rolls his body, but flips onto his back. The reindeer's tongue sticks to the ice. The snowman hurls his head. Twig arm and reindeer lips tug at the carrot. The carrot flies off and lands in soft snow. The reindeer goes after it with snowman and his body parts hanging on his tail. The snowman puts himself back together again and glumly contemplates his noseless state. The reindeer jams the carrot back in place and pants like a proud puppy. The snowman pats him with his stick thin arm, then goes to sneeze. He grabs his nose with both hands. His head shoots off. Frozen, coming this winter in 3D. <laughs> Thank you so much. We'll pause here for a second. Uh, this was the, um, another description of audio description, another example. And here there weren't any captions because perhaps they were not provided with the, with the video. 
But um, again, with somebody who cannot see the uh, video, they were able to understand every little thing that was happening. That, you know, Olaf falls apart, you know, he'd hold his nose and his head blows off, you know, um, his friend's tongue is sticking to the ground. He wouldn't have, um, a blind user would not know all these things if not told. So again, you know, um, this is a ch children's video, but it is very important that, you know, anybody, there could be a child that has this disability and they need to understand every little thing that happens. So, you know, if a sighted child is laughing, why can't a, um, a blind child laugh at the same thing? You know, you don't want them to miss out on anything either. And let's have our um, last video, which is a Lion King video. Hundreds of animals gather at the bottom of Pride Rock, a tall, flat ledge that towers over the rest of the savanna. Zazu, a small blue bird with a large beak, flaps to the ledge. He bows to Mufasa, a powerful, dignified lion with a thick red mane. Rafiki, an elderly baboon with white hair, slowly climbs up to the ledge and hugs Mufasa warmly. They walk back to a cave where Mufasa's wife, Sarabi, cuddles a tiny lion cub in her paws. Smiling, Rafiki bends over Simba, the baby lion, and shakes his walking stick, which has two melons tied to it. Simba swats his paws at the melons playfully. Rafiki breaks one open. The wise old baboon dips his thumb in its juice and draws a line on Simba's forehead. Then he takes a handful of sand and sprinkles it over him. Simba's parents, Mufasa and Sarabi, smile and lean their heads together. Rafiki, who is much smaller than the adult lions, takes Simba up in his arms. Carrying him like a baby, he walks slowly to the end of the ledge, then holds Simba high in the air for all the animals to see. The antelopes jump up and wave their front hooves. The elephants raise their trunks in the air in a salute. The monkeys hop up and down, clapping with joy. The zebras paw the ground, sending up clouds of dust. High above them, Simba dangles from Rafiki's arms, looking small and scared. A ray of sparkling sunshine beams down on Simba like a spotlight. Far below, the animals bow down, their heads nearly touching the ground. From far away, we see every animal from the savanna paying respect to their king's new son. Thank you. Let's go back to the presentation, please. Thank you so much. Um, if you haven't seen The Lion King yet, I hope this, um, you know, instigates you to go ahead and see it now. Um, so what did we see here? The audio description was right on point. All the animals were mentioned. Um, no, you know, um, the name of the characters. I didn't even know any of the characters' names except Simba. Um, the location was mentioned. The environment. Uh, all the actions were described correctly, like um, Rafiki going up to the lion, picking up the lion, raising him up in the air. Um, describes the lion sizes, like there's the cub, and then there's another one that's the mom is smaller than the father. Um, so the size of the animals were mentioned. So these are very little details that help somebody understand a video. So I think we've seen three great examples of audio descriptions. But um, I want to see if anybody has any questions before I move on. So if you have questions, please, you can use the chat window to ask. I have a question here. Are there video hosting sites online that support audio descriptions? Um, yes, there are. Um, not everybody has audio description available. Like YouTube will let you um, update, upload transcripts only for captions, but not audio description. So instead of creating a separate audio description file, what you can do is um, 
voiceover. So just like we saw um, in the last two videos for Frozen and The Lion King, somebody took the video and recorded their voice describing everything you would describe in the audio description, but vocally, and then have, and then put the video and the voice together, and that gives you the audio description. Yes, unfortunately, you know, like YouTube and them, they don't do that yet, and um, they do have a few accessibility features, but not all, and we're gonna get to that soon. I hope I answered your question. Nikki, can you remind our audience um, of how to get into queue if they have a question on the phone, please? Absolutely. If you would like to ask a question, please press the star and one on your touchstone phone. And that is star and one on your touchstone phone if you would like to ask a question. I'm just going to give it another minute or two, see if we have any questions, and then I'll move on. Yes, Lewis, um, that would um, put both the original audio and audio description into one. So the voice, um, the um, voiceover would be recorded over the original video. And I think there's other softwares out there that do it, and I know there's online companies like services that do it for you as well, because it does take a little bit of, um, you know, like, how to create videos and all that knowledge. But I know on the Mac, like GarageBand is really helpful as well. So audio description is just the talking. It, it's nothing to do with the soundtrack. I'm just waiting for some more questions that are coming in. And at the end of the presentation, I'll take questions again. So if you couldn't get them answered right now, I'll get back to you. So the question is, okay, there's, if you have a video of a written slide in the speaker with captions but do not provide the slide content that is not considered compliant. Okay, um, give me one second. Right, so if there is text on the slide, it has to be spoken out. So the, if there's a speaker, an uh, actual person talking, that will be captioned. But if there's text on the slide, that information has to be either um, put into the transcript or create an audio description for that. So that is also information. It, cannot, it, it won't be compliant if skipped. Correct. Um, 
So it would become the only way to view the video, meaning sighted users could not deselect. Correct. But again, um, when, when you're creating a video, you should always have a normal video for sighted users and then have a compliant version. So if you know you're sending this to a blind user, send them the compliant version with the audio description. And I believe some players do allow you to select the audio description, so they, it can be toggled on and off. And certain screen readers will allow that as well. But it's always good to have two versions. You're welcome. All right, um, next slide, please. Now we will look at captions, another very important element of making accessible videos. They turn the audio portion of video into text. They accommodate both visual and hearing impaired audiences, and they can be turned on and off on the video player. Captions turn the audio portion of your video into readable text. Like I said, they accommodate both visual and hearing impaired audiences by making it possible for the video content to be visually read on screen or for a video player to detect the caption file to read the captions aloud. If you notice that there are captions available during this webinar just in case we have participants with a disability, they're at the bottom of your screen. They will be able to read the captions with their screen readers so that they do not miss any information. They will have access to the exact same information we all do. Closed captions appear on the bottom or top of the screens as the video plays. This allows the viewer to read the text and absorb the visuals at the same time. There are two types of captions. Open captions, that's where the words appear automatically on your video. Viewers can't turn them off. Then there are closed captions, words that don't appear unless you turn them on. They are separate from the video itself and you can turn them off. Sometimes I've, you know, if I have somebody in the room and they're sleeping or I don't want to disturb somebody with the sound, I'll just mute my, um, my speakers and I'll put the captions on. So it's not just for somebody with a disability, you know, anybody can use that feature and it's good to have. So without closed captions, a deaf viewer would have to switch back and forth between watching a video and reading a transcript. This can be very distracting and create a disjointed experience. They can easily lose their place, miss key elements on screen, they can be out of sync with the video, Ultimately, a video transcript does not offer an equivalent experience for deaf or hard of hearing viewers. Always remember to add captions to your videos. Players such as YouTube can auto-generate captions, but they are not always correct or in sync. It's best to provide your own captions, which have been created from scratch. There are many third-party softwares and online services that can create captions for your video. Next slide, please. So podcasts, now, you know, we, videos are not the only thing out there. There's podcasts and vlogs and m many other varieties of um, multimedia. So if you have a podcast or other files, if you post or provide podcasts and other audio files such as MP3s, you must include a text transcript of these files. You may provide them as an HTML page containing the transcript, or you may link to a separate text file. If your podcast has an accompanying video with it, which is referred to as a vodcast, the same requirements for video apply. We will now see a demo example where NASA provides transcripts along with their podcasts on their website. So here is NASA's uh, website. So this is where they have all their podcasts. So it says NASA Cast. You can download any of their podcasts. So here you can listen to it directly. But look, they also offer a transcript. And then they also you can also download the code and everything else. It'll take you to the home page. So this is really important. This is compliant. So what you do is you could be at you can select any of these videos, click on transcript, and it'll take you to the transcript. In this way, a person can use 
the transcript through their screen readers to understand the content. Even if they can hear it correctly, having a transcript provided helps as well. Back to your presentation, please. Thank you. Next slide, please. As we all know, videos can only be played through a video player. For compliance, we can't use just any video player. It is necessary to select an accessible video player. It's best to host your videos in a 508 compliant video player that makes it easy to add captioning and audio description files. Additionally, a compliant player makes it possible to navigate video controls by keyboard, include a sign language track, display navigation with color contrast, and adjust caption placement and customize the display. Some captions can be um, at the bottom or at the top. It can be a different font. It could be certain sizes and um, different colors. So always make sure that the color contrast is correct and meets the 508 guidelines. And, um, you know, and it's, the font isn't too small or too hard to read. Other video hosting platforms such as Wistia, Vidyard, Vimeo, and YouTube and Facebook offer several accessibility features as well, although they may not be entirely 508 compliant. Like the question we had earlier, you know, does YouTube allow certain things? They will allow captioning, but no, you cannot do audio descriptions on there or upload your own audio description file. So that's a limitation that YouTube has. But there are other players that may have those. But again, um, it all depends on what the user is using and how their screen reader um, is, um, you know, re relaying the video to them. Okay, next slide, please. So here I'm going to go over a few um, key areas to test for video and audio compliance. So you would use a keyboard to navigate through the multimedia player. That is how a person uses the screen reader. They will tap through the controls. So you have to make sure the controls are in the place that they visually appear. So if they tap, they should be able to tap to the play button, then the next button, the pause, the mute button, the volume button, and so on, so that they can toggle things on and off. So, you know, when you create your video and you embed it in a video um, player, always make sure the controls are lined up and that they work. The worst experience is you want to watch a video and they can't access it because the keyboard isn't working correctly. They press space to play and it's not doing anything. They press tab to go to the next control and they cannot go. They cannot toggle their closed captions on and off. So it's very important to make sure that works. And if you have a screen reader, you can use a screen reader to test it as well, just to triple make sure that it works. So, you know, when testing with the tab key, be sure the tabbing order makes sense. Use a screen reader to review your pages, media player controls, check all of the items you reviewed with your keyboard, plus, Listen to any directions and cues. Make sure there's nothing like one button, two button. Make sure all the buttons are labeled with commonly used terms. Listen to the entire window. Listen to the link as a list. You know, if you have to write them out and go back and compare, do that. You know, um, you know open the list of graphics and headings. Listen to any synchronized audio description tracks. You know, turn off your monitor and Listen, just listen to the screen reader and compare it to when you turn it back on, you know, and compare it to a script that you might have, you know, to make sure that it's the exact content that should be heard from the screen reader and what's displayed in the transcript. And also, you know, always make sure that um, your transcripts read exactly as the audio from your media. You know, check the transcripts for proper punctuation and define all acronyms. Next slide, please. So a few more key areas to look out for. Watch the video to confirm that the captions are visually clear and not pixelated. Like I said, if, you know, the text is like cursive, you know, you can change the font and uh, size of the captions. So make it legible, make it big, make it bold so that it's viewable by everybody. 
And you know that review the captions for spelling, proper grammar, punctuation. Document your testing so that you can use it the next time and you'll learn from you know your from the errors that were caused earlier. You know, you can create screenshots and reports from all your testing tools so that the next time you make better videos and that they're, you know, 508 compliant. Also, do not include flashing, strobing, or flickering elements with a frequency greater than 2 hertz or lower than 55 hertz. This can cause seizures, dizziness, or nausea in certain individuals. You know, and also ask people with um, different disabilities to test your media project if possible. If you have a friend or a relative who is blind, you know, say, hey, can you just check this out for me? I want to see how it works. How, what's your experience? You know, I mean, the more eyes, the more ears, the better your video will, will be. So, you know, their results in using your media may be different from yours. And always, like I said, document your testing so that, you know, you can always improvise and make it better the next time. Next slide, please. So here, um, there are um, ways, like I said, YouTube. YouTube does allow you to put captions in there. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to demo a video of mine that I created and added the captions to. So can we please have the um, last video? And this is a video that my little kitten helped me make. So um, here I have the video, and these are open captions because the captions turned on by themselves. So let's go ahead and play the video, please. Thank you. Back to presentation. So that was an example of um, captions. So there's no audio description on this because um, there wasn't, I, I didn't do a voiceover. I went, you know, the other videos already had voiceover, so you already have an example of that, but this was for captions. So um, you can have captions turn on and off, but that's exactly how it would look. I described every single thing that was happening in that 15 second video. You know, and it is the user's option to turn them on or turn them off. Again, you know, I'm in a room with a bunch of people. I'm YouTubing instead of listening to my lecture. So I want the captions on so I know what's going on. You know, so it's really helpful. Again, like many prefer to, um, you know, host their videos on YouTube. And YouTube does allow the uploading of subtitles, creating subtitles from scratch as well as providing auto-generated caption feature. And I have laid out the steps on how to add subtitles using YouTube Studio. So right now there's a new version of YouTube Studio, and older versions may have Creator Studio instead of Video Manager and instead of Content. So a lot of things have changed in YouTube. Now I will demonstrate a video I created, the same kitten video. I'm going to describe how to um, put the subtitles on there. So if you can please um, let me, thank you. Give me one second, I'm going to go ahead and share my screen. Yeah. All right, so here's um, one of my YouTube channels. So I've already uploaded my video. So all you do is you go to your um, icon, your account, and then you go to uh, YouTube, and then you can go to the studio. So this is what I was saying. This is brand new, the newer version of YouTube. So you go to studio, you can go to videos. Here I only have one video right now, and then in the same area, there are subtitles. So this may look different in older versions, but it kind of follows the same thing. So you go to subtitles right here, click on that, and this will allow you to add subtitles to this one video. So under languages, I've already chosen English for auto-generated, but I want my own subtitles. So right now, this guy does not have subtitles. So what I'm going to do is add right here. So it opens up a new window. And I'm not going to play the video. I can upload a file. I can transcribe and auto-sync. And I can create new subtitles. What I personally like to do is upload a file. So I just do that. The transcript is what I want, not subtitled file. It's a transcript. So I choose that. And then I will go in to my transcript. I'll select this. That's my transcript. As you can see over here, 
it's all written out, the same thing, the caption, upload. So this will take a second to upload. It puts it right here. I can set timings if I want. So if I want to go to timings, I click on there. And then what it does is I can, um, I can set the timings for this. But right now, I'm OK with the way it is. But that's where you would go to um, add your subtitles. So I'm not going to play this right now because it's um, not going to play right while I share. But that's, in, that's um, the way to add subtitles. Back to presentation, please. Next slide, please. I have a few resources that I have um, spelled out here. I have listed that can help you with, um, you know, creating accessible videos anytime. And if you want to, you know, like download this training as well as a reference guide, it would be really helpful. If you follow the checklist before you make your videos available, you can rest assured that they will be fully compliant. Okay, can I have the next slide, please? So I have covered all the major concepts on how to make video and audio 508 compliant. I highly recommend that you download today's training presentation and use it as a reference when needed. So now what we're going to do is let's pause at this time to see if we have any dialogue around this. Nikki, can you please remind everyone how to get into the queue for Q&A? At this time, if you would like to ask a question, please press the star and one on your touchstone phone. You may withdraw your question at any time by pressing the pound key. Once again, to ask a question, please press the star and one on your touchstone phone. And I will check with Anita to see if we have any chat questions. There are no questions in the chat right now. And once again, that is star and one on your touchstone phone if you would like to ask a question. And it appears that we have no questions at this time. OK, I'm just um, waiting on some chat questions. Oh, you're welcome, Louis. He said, I appreciate how detailed you are with this information. Thank you so much. Like audio descriptions and transcripts they, and captions, they look so easy when you view them on videos, but it does take a lot of time. Um, you know, I was asked to do a voiceover for one of my teammates a while ago, and I must have recorded like 30 times because it wasn't perfect. So I had to make sure everything was in sync. So it does take a lot of effort, takes a lot of work, but you know, um, it all pays off at the end when you're, you know, your your video is compliant, it looks beautiful, and you know, it gets this message out. So how would one obtain a screen reader? So there are a couple that are um, free. The one I use is NVDA, which is free. And you can download that and use the screen reader that way. And there's another one called JAWS. And um, JAWS is used more often. It's more famous, but it is very costly. So companies don't want to buy that license for it. But hey, if you have one, you can you know, get JAWS. Um, they're actually the same, JAWS and NVDA. I would be against using Windows Reader. I think there's one with Windows. It's, I forget what it's called, but there is an accessibility reader in Windows, but it's not as reliable. And then there's a lot of um, Google Chrome extensions. Again, they're good for reading, like if you want some, you know, something to read your document or watch a video, but um, I wouldn't recommend it for 508 compliance to check compliance. So I would go with JAWS. I mean, JAWS and NVDA. And 
Okay, Max voice feature. So that, I'm not sure if that just reads stuff to you, but for accessibility, may, I'm not sure if it has a different functionality because um, it may read stuff to you, but will you be able to navigate through the controls on the player? You know, will it let you toggle things on and off? You know, will it let you increase the volume, decrease it, exit the video? So, you know, it's best to go with the trusted ones. And there, I know there's NVDA for Mac as well, so, you know, either way, you know, you'll be able to use it. You're welcome, Lois. I'll just wait a few more minutes to see if there's any more questions coming through. And just a reminder, we do have another Q&A session coming up next week on Wednesday. So if you think of a question after this, you can save it and ask then. It's NVDA, correct, the first one. So when you do download NVDA, um, you can download the full install or there's also a portable install where it just like, it's kind of like it doesn't install on your laptop, you know, fully, but it, it'll still do the same thing. So you don't have, so it, and, and it's really fun to learn because I mean, screen readers are really fun. You can like adjust the reading, um, you can adjust the reading um, speed. You can adjust the voice. You can, you know, train it to do certain things. You can have like hot keys. Like if you press this, it'll do that, you know, so um, screen readers are fun. Also, um, if you have an Apple phone or even if you have like an Android phone, phones have accessibility features as well. So if you're ever bored and wondering how that works, you could also like read your emails, having Siri, let Siri read your emails, you know, or if you're watching a video, experience it, you know, with the accessibility feature. It's really interesting you know, how our phones have evolved and, you know, how accessible, like one of my previous coworkers was 100% um, blind. He had a um, service dog who came to work every single day. His name was Cairo, huge German shepherd. And um, he and I would work together because he would catch things that I wouldn't know with my naked eye, you know, and he knew the screen reader very well. So, um, you know, like he, he used the phone like that, you know, he'd use the accessibility feature, you know, dial certain numbers. He didn't know, he couldn't see the phone to dial. So he would talk to it or he'd have some like um, shortcut keys and then it would speak to him and read out his voicemail. So. And, there's, and it's not just for blind users, it's for, you know, you can invert your colors. You, know, you can invert colors to, um, for better vision. You could use, um, there's a lot of other features. I haven't, you know, looked at all of them, but they're um, they're there. So if you're ever, you know, curious, do explore. So I don't see any more questions coming through. So um, can I have the next slide, please? All right. Now we're going to pause here, and may we please have our second poll question in regards to today's training? Thank you for your response. May we please have our final poll question, please? Thank you for your response. This brings us to the end of our training presentation. 
I'd like to summarize the key points we learned today. We learned the importance of audio descriptions, how captioning works, the two types of captions, providing transcripts for all other audio formats, as well as some key elements to test to make sure your videos are 508 compliant. There will be a Q&A session held on June 24th for any additional questions you may have. Please feel free to register and bring your questions. Registration link is provided on the previous slide as well as in the chat window. Videos, especially educational and training videos, should be open to every single person. By taking steps to follow these guidelines, you're creating content that can be appreciated and understood by all viewers, regardless of their abilities and disabilities. Thank you so much for your interest and attendance today. Have a safe and wonderful day.